Today, I'm getting over my fear of tear makers <laughs> to bring you the definitive list and ranking of all the murder mystery books I've ever read. welcome back to my channel I hope you're all good today that's right we are going to tier rank all of the murder mystery books I have ever read I've put them all into tier maker and we're gonna rank them together well today is going to be the best day ever a lot of you often ask me when I do videos like my top murder mystery books etc what I thought of this murder mystery or this murder mystery or you know ask about all the different ones I've read so this is the definitive list but before we get into the video I want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video which is Serious Readers. So Serious Readers make reading lights this is mine and I love it so much. <laughs> So Sirius lights are so special because they come with daylight wavelength technology and this replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible. And I've definitely noticed that when reading, particularly now that it's getting so much darker, so much quicker, and reading a lot more at night and in the dark, I have found that I've been getting so much less eye strain when reading. And I've also found that I've been reading a lot longer. Usually when I'm reading at night, I can get distracted, I can get sleepy. And I've noticed that reading with this has really been stopping that and has been helping me stay focused on my reading for longer which is really interesting that's not a benefit I necessarily thought I would get before I started using it I have the high definition light and it's really adjustable so you can move the head around so it fits best and when you're reading like the position you're reading in you can adjust it it also has a dimmer that you can adjust so I have loved using my light I use it pretty much all the time that I read at night time now when I'm in bed and I have a code you guys can use which is meg22 which with any purchase in the serious light range you'll get a free compact light value at 150 pounds 150 pounds a free light with 150 pounds with any purchase in a serious light range and I've had a few of you comment and be like oh I wish I could get this but I'm international don't despair this code includes free international shipping free international shipping and also even though serious readers are a UK company all of the lights are made in the UK they have complete control over the lights they make so they can attach any plug that you need whether you need a US plug a European plug any kind of plug that you need attached to the light they can do that so being international is no problem because you get free shipping and they can do any plug that you need. So I would really recommend coming up to the festive season. This would be an amazing gift for someone else or for you to ask for for yourself. It's really been helping me get more reading done, particularly at night time. And I just love it so much. So make sure you go check out Serious Readers down below. So yeah, I've collated all of my murder mystery books that I've ever read. Now, murder mystery, like some of these are a bit of a stretch, right? Big Little Lies, is that a murder mystery? I don't know. Like there's some books on here that are like half murder mystery. There's some books that are probably like 48% murder mystery that I have excluded from the list. Listen, when I was, I was going through every book that I've ever read, some made the cut, some didn't, if they were tentative, if they were on the border. So let's go through the tiers that we're gonna have to rank in this video. So first we have- Get that fire exit door, I'm off. So this is the worst. Get me out of here. Did not like this. Next we have. I don't remember. I don't remember, love. I don't remember at all. I really don't. It was an awful long time ago. Oh. This is one I I don't really remember. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know her. Don't have much recollection of reading it. It was pretty un unrememberable. <laughs> it's pretty forgettable. Then we have. Push me up against the wall. Give me a kiss. Then I might get excited. So this is books that like were fine, but just didn't excite me. They were boring. They didn't have any flavor to them. Is murder, why is murder on the links on here three times? <laughs> what is going on here everything is duplicated hang on what is going on you can't delete images i have to make a whole new one <laughs> okay we're back we're back we're back it worked oh my god <laughs> Jesus. so push me up against the wall is the books that just don't excite me right they're fine they're just not exciting then we have I'm an acquired taste. You don't like me? Acquire some taste. These are books that I really enjoy, but I can see why people wouldn't. Because <laughs> they're an acquired taste. You know, this this tier isn't necessarily gonna be like the highest rate at the top, lowest rate at the bottom. It's more vibes, you get me? Also, the bin men are outside just as I'm starting to feel like it. <laughs> then we have The album's amazing, song to song. I can't stress it enough. This is ones I love. I think they're great. They're great, solid books from beginning to end. I really love them. And then we have 
I'm going to collapse. No, I don't. I feel faint. We've struck gold, ladies. This is the best of the best. We've struck gold. Like, top tier, amazing, great, wonderful, fantastic, amazing, great, <laughs> wonderful. The best, the best, the best, right? I'm gonna, like, try and reserve We Struck Gold for the top of the top. There may be five stars that I put in the album's amazing song to song, right? That is really reserved for the top top of the top. Okay, so let's get going. Fatal Crossing by Tom Hindle. I read this earlier this year. It was fine. I didn't love it. I think that's gonna go and push me up against the wall. Like, it just didn't excite me. It was fine. Didn't love it. Oh, okay, now we've got a few T.E. Kinseys. <laughs> let's do all these oh, in, in the order that they came out in. So, Quiet Life in the Country... Or say, hmm, this one's tricky because I can see why some people don't love it because it's cozy mysteries, it's simple, it's like, you know, just, I'm going to say I'm Acquired Taste. No, I'm going to say Quite Life in the Country album's amazing song to song. Then In the Market for Murder, let's find that. That's the second one. That's my favourite one. Where is it? That's going to go... I feel faint, we've struck gold. I love In the Market for Murder. That's my favourite in the series. Then Death Around the Bend... I'll put I'm an acquired taste and the picture of murder. I'll put acquired taste. See, oh, I'm being harsh. This is harsh. Like Death Around the Bend, I still gave four stars. Picture of murder was like a 3.5. But um, I do love, that is my favorite cozy mystery series. The next one's set in January. So I'm very excited to read it in January. You know, if you like cozy mysteries with like a really lovely duo, it's Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo and the books are told from Flo's perspective. And they've been friends for many years. They were secret spies together back in the day. <laughs> They're just a comfort read for me. I do love them. Shiver by Ali Reynolds. Get that fire exit door. I'm off. I didn't like it. <laughs> How do you know what's good for me? That's my opinion! I just wasn't a fan of the reveals in this. I found the whole thing pretty boring. An Unwanted Guest by Shari Lapina. The album's amazing song to song. I feel like I didn't, I feel like I read this in an era when I was having really good luck with murder mysteries and I didn't appreciate it fully for what it's worth, you know? An Unwanted Guest is such a good isolated closed circle murder mystery. Like they're all snowed in at this inn. It's so atmospheric. I think this would be a great one to read around Christmas time. It's my favorite Shari Lapina I've ever read, definitely. And then there were none back at Christie. Okay, this is where I'm gonna get controversial. I don't love And Then There Were None. I really don't. I've learned that it's just something about the format I don't like because we may see a few other And Then There Were None retellings in this list and I just don't tend to like them. <laughs> Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? I don't like scheduled killings. I don't like knowing like, okay, someone's gonna die soon. I like the killings to be shocked. Like I wanna be shocked, right? If I'm not shocked by the murder, what's the point? What are people dying for? When the reveal happens at the end, it's like, Oh my God, it's so annoying. <laughs> I really didn't like, you know, the how this was done moment. I didn't like that. It's gonna go push me up against the wall, give me a kiss and I might get excited. Like I can see why people like it, but it didn't do it for me. Big Little Lies, we struck gold. <laughs> I loved Big Little Lies. Here's the thing, it's not exactly a murder mystery, really. This was like really 50-50, but I wanted to put it in here anyway, because I loved this. I read this when I had COVID. It was the only thing I could do when I had COVID was read this book slowly. And I just loved the campiness of it. I tried to watch the show and I couldn't get into it because the show was like all dark and broody and we're in LA now and we're serious. And I'm like, no, I liked about Big Little Lies how ridiculous it was and how it was all these mums fighting. Like I loved that. I love that. I can't wait till I have kids and they go to school and I'm gonna be embroiled on all the mum drama. I'm not gonna be starting it, but I'm just like, it's, it's fun to watch from afar. <laughs> the boy in the red dress, I don't remember. It wasn't even that long ago. I read this this summer. <laughs> I don't remember. This is like a historical murder mystery where it's about a boy in the red dress. He's like a drag performer. And he's accused of a murder mystery and his girly here is gonna try and save him. This was just like, I just, I don't remember it. <laughs> Couldn't really tell you anything that happened in this book. Dead Dead Girls by Nikita Afia. Uh, I'm, mm, um, <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm an acquired taste. I liked it. I'm gonna continue on with the series, but it was like a debut and there was some like debutiness about it. <laughs> this is another historical murder mystery set in Harlem. All these girls are getting killed and our main character takes it upon herself to find out what is happening. Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, We Struck Gold. This is one of my favorite Agatha Christie's. I read this this year and I really did enjoy it. Cause here's the thing, Miss Agatha had two husbands, right? The cheating, lying scumbag that was Mr. Christie. I can't remember his name. 
<laughs> you know, when he cheated, she like had a bit of a breakdown, ran away, was missing. Listen, we don't we don't recognize him. But then she was with this like I think it was like an archaeologist guy, and she like traveled the world with him, and that's why she has all these like death on the Nile, murder on the Orient Express. Like she starts traveling, sis starts traveling, Pryor starts going on travels, and I love that for her. I love that for her. Death on the Nile like embodies her freedom for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Devil in Dark Water's an interesting one because I really did enjoy it, but I think it's gonna go in I'm an acquired taste. Like I gave that five stars. This is what I'm saying. This is not like although I'm tier ranking it, I'm kind of tier ranking it for other people, maybe. Um, not for myself, because I gave it five stars, but I can rec I can understand why people wouldn't like this. <laughs> another historical one, this is set on a ship. This is another one that's like only it's like not really a murder mystery, but I included it anyway. Like this is in my top ten murder mysteries, I think, video that I made, but I'm putting it here because the ending is special is ridiculous like <laughs> I couldn't really understand why people wouldn't like it like it's a very unsatisfying ridiculous ending like my mum didn't like it oh a good girl's guide to murder easy we shot gold the best maybe the best love it my favorite probably my favorite YA murder mystery that I've ever read I love a good girl's guide to murder very nervous for five survived by Holly Jackson coming out later to this year. I'm like rattled. I'm nervous about it, but I'm excited. But it's more thriller, so that's what makes me nervous because I just think she did a murder mystery so well. Honjin Murders, that's Amber's amazing song to song. I need to continue on with Seshi Yokimizo's work. He's basically the Agatha Christie of Japan. He has this detective, the detective in the Honjin Murders. He's written like, I don't know, 60, 100 books. I don't know, loads and loads of books as detective and they're being translated into English. And I have, I own two more of them. And I think one more has been translated as well than what I own. I really loved this. It was such an interesting murder mystery. It's a locked room murder mystery. Um, a husband and wife are murdered on their wedding eve. And it's a locked room. They were staying in a cabin that was locked on the inside. There has been snow overnight night and there's been no footprints around the cabin and so it's really like how this is done is crazy it's one of the craziest like murder mystery reviews, reveals I've ever read so I definitely need to read some more of his stuff how we fall apart I read earlier this year for my book club on patreon I don't remember <laughs> I think it was fine. I was just a bit bored. I also remember feeling like it was young YA, which I just think is not necessarily a bad thing. Like I think that should exist. I remember saying if I was like reading this when I was 12, I would have eaten it up. Like I would have been obsessed with the drama in this, but it just wasn't for me as an adult. In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, I've just read and the reading vlog for it is coming this weekend. I'm gonna put the album's amazing song to song. It's not quite We've Struck Gold for me. You'll see all my thoughts this weekend, but it was it was good. Like I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Marion Lane, get that fire exit door. <laughs> I hate her, I tell you now. This was so disappointing for me. I loved the cover of this so much. I remember I bought this, I still remember, I bought this book for myself as a reward for finishing my documentary, like my dissertation for my year three of uni. It was like my reward. This was like, I was so excited for this book. No, did not like it, really didn't like it. This is another series I did not continue. Midwinter Murder by Agatha Christie. Um. This one's tricky. We've got three Agatha Christie's here to chat about. I'm gonna go push me up against the wall. I did enjoy this, like, I read this on Christmas Day, I think, last year, and it was fun to read on Christmas Day. I would really like to read Poirot's Christmas or there's another like Christmas one that um, has a special edition. I'll put them here. I would read, I don't own any of them, but I would like to read one of those to you probably this Christmas. It's an enjoyable experience, but I didn't love, this was short stories. And I just, there were some I preferred more than others, you know? So it was just fine. Murder on the Orient Express, we've struggled. Absolutely, we've struggled. I love Murder on the Orient Express. This is the first, I think the first murder mystery I really ever read. Definitely the first Agatha Christie I've ever read. And it's still probably my favorite Agatha Christie. I love it. 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 I mean, I'm I'm so passionate about it. Like, here's the thing. I love like some stuff that people would see as boring. Murder on the Orient Express is literally all interviews. It's all in like most of the book is him interviewing every person who's been on this train when a murder has been committed. And I love that. Like it's formulaic, but I love that because I think it really gives you the reader like the chance to put clues together because you're in the setting and you're just getting the interviews. And uh, Murder on the Orient Express is one of the best reveals ever. It's so good. Miss you the blue train. I don't remember. Don't remember her. <laughs> or maybe even get that Farrakh's door, I'm off. Um, no, I don't remember her. Mm, this was like a two star for me. I did not love this. Not a Happy Family by Shari Lapina. This was like another two star. I'm gonna say get that Farrakh's door, I'm off. Did not enjoy this. This was another book club one. 
I don't always have the best luck with book club picks. Yeah, this wasn't it. This is probably my least favorite Sherry the Peanut I've read. The reveals were so predictable. I knew who it was the entire book. And it's about um, this family where the three kids go to visit their parents for dinner. And the next morning the parents are found dead. So you think one of the kids or one of the kids partners have murdered the parents. And it was just obvious who it was the entire time. And I just... <laughs> <laughs> didn't enjoy it. One by one by Ruth Ware, it's going straight to the top. I don't care. Oh, I want to fight the battle. I want to fight the battle. Oh yeah, I'm going to fight the battle. People did not love this when it came out. I loved this. This is maybe my favorite Ruth Ware. Yeah, I loved one by one. <laughs> I loved it. This is another isolated, snowed in murder mystery. We've got this company called Snoop who are there together on this retreat and they start getting killed off one by one. I just thought this was a really well done mystery. It had a few unique elements to it. It has a great chase scene near the end that I felt so tense in. And what is really special about this book without spoiling much is that for a good chunk of the book, you, the audience, think you know who's done it, right? You think it's not like a big, like, unmask reveal at the end, necessarily. And how the tension builds in those parts when you think you're pretty sure you know who's done it, and the way the tension builds and you feel sick and you're like, oh my god, like, please don't let it be them. Like, it's so... so good. So yeah, Ruth Ware, I disagree with everyone else on that. Praro Investigates, I don't remember that. I think that might be short stories. Is it? I think that's like, because I read the Poro series in order, I think that's like the third one in the Poro series and I think it's short stories. I read the audiobook, I don't remember a thing about it. Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. Mm. Or Sally Album's Amazing Song to Song. I really, I read this this year and I really did enjoy it. It's pitched as an and then there went on retelling and it's not, so I didn't, <laughs> I don't mind it. This is about these characters who go to stay on this deserted island and death ensues basically, bad stuff ensues, people being bad ensues. This was one of the quickest books I've ever read. I think this, I, it's like 300 pages, I read it in like two hours. You could not stop me reading it. It's such a compulsively readable book. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. Sleep by C.L. Taylor. I just read it, it was a three star. I'm gonna say push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, I might get excited. It didn't do what an unwanted guest did and that's what I wanted it to do. It's another like at a hotel, a group of characters who don't know each other, stuck in a storm, basically, and murder ensues. And I just, like, when I've read and I a guest, sleep just can't compare. It just couldn't compare. You're not on my level, Nicole. Longer. You never will be on my level. Do not compare yourself to me. I liked the writing, I liked the main character, but I just didn't feel like the tension was really there and there wasn't many twists. The Appeal by Janice Hallett. Now this is a tricky one because this is a book that I wanted to love so badly that I think when I read it, I gave it a 3.5 out of like disappointment that it wasn't the favorite book I've ever read, but I did enjoy it. So I think I've raised it to a four. I'm gonna say I'm a, I'm a quiet taste. So this book is told entirely through emails after a murder has happened and you're supposed to be these students who are like, are they students? I don't know, like investigators who are reading through all the emails and trying to figure out who committed the murder. The big full bags, Chrissy, get a fire exit door. Well, just as I thought, trash. This is my least favorite Agatha Christie. I gave us one star. So this one, I will forgive her though, because this one was originally a series of like periodicals in a newspaper. I don't think it was ever supposed to be a book, but then Miss Agatha had her like, had her breakdown <laughs> and she was writing the mystery of the blue train, but she wasn't happy with it. I think you can see that this was like through a difficult period of her life. Cause I, I think you can see that it was tough for her. And so she, she wasn't ready to publish that, but she had to publish a book. And so then I think it was like her brother-in-law suggested publishing the four as the next book. So yeah, I just didn't love this. I think that because it was a newspaper, like periodical, the pacing is off and it's got some bad Christie racism in it. All of her books, well not all of her books, some are not as bad as others, but when you go into them, you have to accept that she's writing in the 1930s, at the, a lot of the ones I've read at least, because I've read a lot of her earlier ones. You see you see aspects of the time <laughs> in them, but also flawed opinions that she had as an individual. And, you know, I think it's different reading that kind of stuff in an Agatha Christie book versus reading it in a modern day book, but I don't believe that she should get off the cape, you know, get off scot-free because, oh, it was in the past also, you know? But I do continue to read her stuff because I do love murder mystery as a genre and she, you know, when you read books, you can see that she is the originator of so much, but yeah, the big four was not for me. <laughs>
<laughs> the Broken Girls by Simone St. James. The We Struck Gold Ladies. I loved it. We Struck... Oh my God. Broken Girls were so good. Speculative, multiple two murder mysteries that were trying to solve across different time periods. Dual timeline that I actually liked. Great characters. Oh, it was good. Oh, and the guest list. We have to put at We've Struck Gold as well. I can't not. It was one of the first murder mysteries I ever read and I loved it. I don't know if I read it for the first time today if I would love it as much. You better f***ing take that back right now. You better stop you it. Stop, 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 stop right stop now. It. I think she just does simple murder mysteries so well. She's probably the closest I've read, not in terms of writing, I don't think she writes like her, but I think in terms of like how the murder mystery is framed, the closest modern writer to Agatha Christie that I've found. You know, you have these archetypal characters, you have like maybe six characters, you know that they're your suspects, and then you kind of start going about investigating them. Um, so yeah, the guess this is a very important one for me. The Islanders, another, and then there were none retelling, get that fire except drama off, I did not like it. I didn't like it. This is like a Love Island murder mystery. So it's like, if you know the show Love Island, they've gone on that show and then they start getting killed off one by one. <laughs> I hate this one. I read it. I'm so sorry. I feel so bad, but I didn't like it. The Last by Hannah Jameson is the epitome of I'm an acquired taste, don't like me, acquire some taste. Like literally the epitome of it. <laughs> I loved it. I think I gave it Maybe I only gave it a four, but it's one of the books I think about the most. It's set in the apocalypse, a nuclear apocalypse. You and like 30 other survivors are in this Swiss hotel. You don't know if any of the rest of the world has survived and a body is found. I love the tension that's built up. It's a really fun book, but the ending is so ridiculous. Like <laughs> the ending is not good, but it's so bad that I kind of think it's amazing. Like I kind of think it's genius, but I can understand why people hate that one. The maid, the maid, the maid, the maid. I gave it four stars. I'm gonna say acquired taste. It, mm, yeah, it was good. This is a book I actually, conversely to the last, I feel like has gone down a little bit in my ratings. Um, since I've read it. It was a very simple murder mystery, but I'm not sure in the best way. I enjoyed it when I read it, but I don't look back on it as like, wow, that was incredible, you know? Rich Lost Men, let's do the two Thursday Murder Club books. Thursday Murder Club, We've Struck Gold, one of my favorite books I've read last year, one of my favorite books. I'm gonna put the second one, even though it was five stars, I'm gonna put it in the album's amazing song to song, because I didn't love it as much as the first one. I don't think it's as strong, but it is good. Like, I just, I do love this series. It's just the perfect, like, modern, mainstream, Dream, cozy mystery. I love that we're following elderly characters. I love the relationships that are built up alongside the murder mystery. I just think it's it's amazing and I'm very excited to read Bullet the Mist. The murder of Roger Ackroyd. We have a few Agatha Christie's again. Um, murder of Roger Ackroyd. Hmm. Now, here's the thing. In terms of like the ending, we struck gold. One of the most ingenious reveals, I think, by Agatha Christie again. I'm gonna put it in the album's amazing song to song. Cause I think the beginning of the book, I found a little bit boring when I read it. Not boring, but like, I just didn't love it as much as say, Murder on the Orient Express. Because it is more of like a small town, cozy, slow mystery. And then the ending is amazing. But I'm gonna put it in the album's amazing song to song. Murder on the Lynx. I don't remember. <laughs> I think I remember really not liking it, but I don't remember well enough to say. <laughs> There's a few Agatha Christie's in here. <laughs> I don't know. Die kenne ich nicht. Oops. This is the thing with Agatha Christie. I either love her or I don't like her. <laughs> The Mysterious of Herit Styles, I actually put in the one above. This is her first book, and I think it's really good for her first book. Like, it was literally her first one ever. It's Proro as well. And I think it is a good stately home murder mystery. Uh, the Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley will put the album's amazing song to song. I did give this five stars earlier this year. I did really enjoy it. Again, I know a lot of people didn't love this, but I just think Lucy Foley just gets the vibe that I want. I loved the Paris location. There is a reveal in this book that is like, it's really good. That I didn't predict before it got revealed. Like I had no idea. And when it got revealed, I was sh shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking. I'm physically shaking. So yeah, The Paris Apartment is a good one. The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. I don't remember much. I'm gonna say push me up. Mm. I'm gonna say an acquired taste. I didn't love this. I think I gave it like a 3.54. It's set at this like revamped sanatorium, right? It's been turned into a hotel. And I think this is a great like thrilling murder mystery. There's a lot of twists throughout it that really like, oh my God, like I, we're really scary almost and really tense. But the ending again, wasn't great. <laughs> It was to make a point and I just didn't think it paid off. Seven Deaths of Van Hardcastle pushed me up against a wall. I didn't love this. I much prefer Devil in the Dark Water, even though Stuart, um, 
Stuart Tatton's other book, Evan Hardcastle, was much more popular. But I just, this one was just like, it was a bit too much for me. And the, I didn't like the ending reveal either. Um, and this is the one where like, he's jumping around in peop different people's bodies every day he wakes up, he relives the day where the murder happens again. And I, I just felt like it was a little bit complicated for its own good. I feel like Devil in the Dark Water was good, complicated, good, clever. This one was a little bit too much. I'm gonna put three dahlias. I gave this four stars. I just read it, so it's a bit more fresh in my memory. I'm gonna say the album's amazing song to song. I think this is a solid murder mystery. It's very fun. Um, I just read it in a vlog where my cats <laughs> picked what I read for Halloween. Like, this book is very referential to Agatha Christie and I think it does it very well. And I really liked the mystery, but it was just a fun book as well. It's set at a convention, like a super fan convention for this fictitious <laughs> female murder mystery author from the 1930s. I just thought it was a very fun, fun book. True Crime Story by Joseph Knox. I don't know if it's quite We've Struck Gold. Like when I look at the We've Struck Gold ones, I'm gonna put it in the album's amazing song to song. I did love this, I read it recently, I gave it five stars, but I feel like it's not quite up there with those like top ones, you know? Like The Devil and Dark Water is in my top 10. Like that is amongst those, but it is an acquired taste, so it goes here. So this isn't quite, I don't know, do I put it in We've Struck Gold? No, I'm putting it in the album's amazing song to song. I'm putting it in the album's amazing song to song because I would have liked a little bit again a bigger mix of mixed media i don't know i think like interviews they needed to be like a few other stuff there was interviews and emails um this is like a mixed media murder mystery about a girl well i guess it isn't really a murder mystery it's a girl who's gone missing but sometimes i allow missing person like the paris apartment is kind of a missing person murder mystery like they're missing have they been murdered kind of thing you know the winter mystery I'm an acquired taste. I did enjoy this. This was a book where I s tried to solve it. So I read it <laughs> and like had like a crime board up on my wall and like tried to solve the mysteries I went along. And I really loved the experience of that. It's the only classic crime book other than Agatha Christie I've ever read. And it was a really fun experience to read, you know, a different, a different classic crime book. But I guess it wouldn't be for everyone. And then Woman in Cabin 10, uh, hang on. <laughs> Let's put it in the album's amazing song to song. I think that's where it deserves to go. <laughs> that's where we're gonna put it. Cause I did, I did really, really enjoy this. This is a very good Ruth Ware. It's up there again as one of my favorites. So there we have it. That is my tier ranking of all the murder mystery books I've ever read. This feels pretty right to me. Like I feel like this, this ranking, it feels right to me. You know, Agatha has a few up top. She has a few down the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video of me tier ranking all the murder mystery books I've ever read. This is a pretty good place to come if you want murder mystery recommendations, I guess. Again, it wasn't like, oh, the five stars at the top, the one stars at the bottom. It's also in between, there's a few nuances. <laughs> Cause the last is one that I think about the most. Devil and Dark Watch, I gave five stars, you know. So thank you so much for watching. If you got into the end, comment the magnifying glass or knife emoji down below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out Serious Readers again and use my code. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.